We spent time here yesterday with a lot of the members of the fishing community, and you hear the most interesting things in philosophy. We spoke with Dean Blanchard, who runs this fish processing, shrimp processing area, and he said to me this morning, he said, you know, when I was a kid growing up during the uh, Cold War, I thought if I died early, it would be because of the Soviets. He said, I never imagined it would be the British that are killing me. And of course, he's referring to British Petroleum. That sense of anger and rage is throughout this area, and it's mixed in with fear. We're just on the cusp of seeing the oil roll into the shores here. And keep in mind, it's taken 31 days to get here. As it starts to soak into the marshlands, it also threatens the marine life that so many families here in Grand Isle depend on. And while everyone here wants a happy ending, almost no one thinks that's possible. You ask about BP and you see the raw emotion of a man whose very livelihood is at stake. If I could see him right now, I would probably have to go burn in hell. Floyd and Julie Lassane have been combing the Gulf for shrimp, oysters, and crabs for 30 years. How much does this hurt? It kills me. It just kills me. It absolutely kills me, you know. This is all I did all my life, and this is all I really want to do all my life. But they may not be able to do it much longer. Today, their boats are quiet, their nets are stored, and their future is in doubt. What's at stake here? Our livelihood. Everything we own. I mean, everything we own, we could lose because we don't have an income right now. In a good year, the Lassanes could earn upwards of $70,000, the reward for 14-hour days with little rest. Now, with oil killing or contaminating their catch. This is covered with oil This is right covered now. with oil, correct. Their exhaustion comes from sleepless nights filled with worry and heartache. I'm just worried about my, the, the, much, my daughter's future. My daughter's 14 years old. She wants to go to college, and we, right now we can't afford to send her to college because financially we can't support her. No one here in Grand Isle is immune from the pain inflicted by this oil spill, not even the children. Are you worried? Oh, yeah. I mean, my future is here. I mean, I want to grow up to be a doctor and come back here and, like, practice and help my community, but if, is there going to be a community? By then. To this town of 1600, not being able to live off the Gulf isn't just about economics, but about history, culture, and community. The Lassane family knows that well. They've been fishing these waters for a century. Fishing's been in your family for how many generations? My brother is the fifth. You think there's going to be a fifth? Mm, not with this. We've been married 27, it's going to be 27 years this month. You know, and we've been through Katrina. Katrina demolished our house. We've been, I had cancer. I fought that, I beat that. Went through Gustav, beat Gustav, and now we got this. Where are you if, if this drags out weeks, months? Where's this business, where's this boat? The boat's gonna stay tied up at the dock because I can't do nothing with it, you know? Can't go to work. It's got to stay tied up at the dock. These are proud people, Maggie, who do most everything themselves. And what pains them most right now is that this situation, they can't do anything about. Dave, have the Lasanes thought about plan B? I mean, this is something they've done their entire lives. If they can't do this, what will they do? Well, it's interesting. Uh, Floyd uh, was, was very candid with us. He cannot read or write. And he said this is all he knows. He does not know if there is a plan B. So he is quite honestly paralyzed with fear, not only for himself, but for his daughter and for the next generation and his friends and neighbors here, because this is a community that simply survives on these waters for both fishing, tourism, and a way of life. And what makes it worse, some say even than Katrina, because the hurricane came and went, but the oil keeps coming and things seem to be getting worse by the day, is to think about how a community like this rebounds from something like this. Well, the question is, can it rebound? You have, you have the effect of the toxicity of the water and what it does to the food supply. You have the fact that no one is gonna to come to a place like Grand Isle, so they say if it's polluted. And if no one comes and there's no industry here, who's going to stay? And that's a problem that's already battled and plagued this state since Katrina. So the question is, what now? Too much. Dave Price in Grand Isle, Louisiana, thank you so much. A lot happens early on The Early Show, weekday mornings on CBS.